Hello. It's mid-June and it's time for a homestead garden tour. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. We'll start with a quick walk through the annual vegetable garden and then go and have a look at some of the other growing areas. So uh, the asparagus in this bed uh, has a lot of it's come into flower, um, some of it in leaf. It has been really stressed because of the lack of water over the last few weeks and that's a common theme right across the garden. Uh, on this side the uh, Taunton Dean Kale is also uh, showing some signs of stress. Uh, the leaves are starting to go uh, really purple, also getting quite leathery. Um, and although I have done some watering uh, in, this, uh, in this garden, probably not enough, um, but I'm trying to use rainwater rather than tap water. We're pretty much out of that now. And in that same bed uh, as the Taunton Dean Kale, there's some walking onions, a little bit more asparagus, some Babington leeks, which are a perennial leek, and some Swiss chard, some rainbow coloured Swiss chard. All of that uh, showing signs of uh, being very thirsty. And then um, these two beds are fruit beds. On this side uh, is raspberries. Well, they're just growing. I'm not expecting any fruit from those for a while. And on this side is the strawberry bed. I'm not sure what to think about the strawberries. Um, they are, they're delicious, I should start by saying, but they're very small. And I don't know whether that's because most of these plants are now in their either third or fourth year. And I do know that strawberries become less productive as they get older. Uh, so you know, years two and three are probably their most productive. And I would guess probably a lot of these are in year four now. Or whether this is also symptomatic uh, of a lack of rain. Uh, there are lots and lots of seeds on the strawberries, but they're really close together. And it's just like the strawberries haven't been able to fill out and plump out enough. Um, so I don't know. If you have any ideas of why we have such little strawberries this year, uh, please leave a message in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And in this bed, I have a polyculture. There are lettuces at that end and some nasturtiums. And there's onions at that end too, and more onions here. Uh, these are uh, calendula. And I use both the nasturtium flowers and the calendula uh, in salads. They're edible uh, and they add a really nice bright pop of colour. And then there's some rocket, red Russian kale, spinach some baby beets and some more lettuce and at the far end there are two pink banana squash plants and then behind me here uh, in this bed this has got uh, broad beans in it uh, these are fava beans elsewhere they haven't done very well this year previously uh, I sowed them in the autumn but the slugs ate them in the spring and so last year I started planting them in the spring which is what I've done again this year but they haven't got very big. They have produced a few bean pods. I'm just feeling to see if those bean pods are ripe yet, which they're not. And I was looking back at a video I made this time last year when I did uh, a garden tour and I had just finished harvesting the beans. Don't think these are gonna be ready for another couple of weeks yet. And I think that's a reflection uh, of just how dry the weather has been for several weeks. Now today I'm in a thermal vest and a t-shirt and my fleece. It hasn't been warm. The sun is just starting to come out now and it is getting warmer, but it's been a chilly morning and we have had a cooler uh, week or so, but still very little rain. Well, it did start raining last night and the soil has um, is damp down to maybe a centimetre and a half, something like half an inch and um, that's a start but it's not uh, the volume of water that we need for the garden to really pick up and get going. Hello Monty, you haven't been out to join me in a, a garden tour for a while have you? He does come out and join me every day but he doesn't come out when we're filming do you? No, are you going to join me all the way around or just for a little scritch? Oh, you are a lovely boy. And these two beds, again, uh, have polycultures in them. So that's got some broad beans 
sewn later than those ones, so they're even smaller. Uh, and some lettuces. I've got a few radish coming here uh, and some parsnips. Now, these are self-sown um, and some of them uh, may well be last year's, so they might just run to seed this year. And here, uh, this flower is, it's lavender mist, it's nigella. It's self-sown. I, I wouldn't necessarily opt to have it there, but I'm quite happy for it to be there. It will help attract pollinators to this bed and that's good because the broad beans have flowers and they need pollinating. And then on this side, um, there is uh, the garlic that I put in uh, well over a year ago, 18 months ago, and I didn't get around to harvesting that bit last year. So I've left it to grow uh, as a perennial garlic. And I have had some of it this year by digging up the whole clump and using that. I've used the leaves quite a lot. Well, that's starting to die back now. And part of me thinks I should lift it all uh, and move it elsewhere because it's in with the beans. And I learnt uh, very recently that uh, it's not a good idea to grow alliums, so that's onions, garlic, leek, uh, wherever you're growing beans because they give off something that slows down the, the growth of the beans. Remains to be seen whether it has an impact on the beans there. The, I've grown beans on this site for a couple of years now and um, I haven't seen uh, any beans coming back. This is a bed where I just cut all the beans off to see if they would regrow. I haven't spotted any as yet, uh, but I haven't done a very intense look at them. So it's got Greek Gigantes beans, uh, more calendula, uh, the garlic and some parsnips and some borage in here. Oh, and this uh, is an Aquilegia. It's now going to seed, but I love the colour of this one. Uh, it was a pretty pink colour, so I'm quite happy for that to go to seed there. And I've also noticed uh, I'm growing a very nice potato in this bed. I don't even remember having potatoes in this bed, so perhaps it's one <laughs> as I was harvesting, uh, I tossed it in this direction. Um, anyway, that's growing, uh, so hopefully that will give us oh, well, a small harvest, if nothing else. And uh, at the end of this bed um, is a very lovely uh, parsnip. This is going to seed. Uh, the flowers are just coming, these bright, bright yellow flowers held open like this and hoverflies love it. Um, what else have we got on here? Uh, there's ladybird larvae. Actually, there's quite a lot of ladybird larvae on here, which is brilliant news. Very pleased that they're all arriving uh, to deal with some of the aphids in the garden. I like to leave at least one parsnip to go to seed each year. Uh, so I have fresh seed for the next year's sowings. Now this year, something happened to the seeds. I either lost them or they got damp and I can't remember which it is, but anyway, I didn't have any home, homegrown seeds. Um, so I have had to buy some uh, for this year and I've had varying degrees of success. The advantage of using seeds uh, that you've collected at home is that these plants will have started acclimatizing to this microclimate and in theory should be stronger healthier plants each year and then these two beds again more polycultures uh, so this has got peas uh, potatoes beetroot and uh, some more of this lovely borage in it and on that side uh, under the netting I've got um, red cabbage savoy cabbage and purple sprouting broccoli uh, and then down the side, uh, there's lots of parsley. And on that side, there's some calendula. And this bed has our runner beans in it. Last year, I cut all the plant growth off, leaving the stems about four to six inches sticking out of the ground. And I mulched it and I took away the tops uh, in the hope that some of it would grow back and I would have what I'm calling perennial beans because they're coming back year after year. And last week I could only see four plants that had grown back this year. Well, today I'm very pleased to say there are now nine that are showing signs of coming back and it's, <laughs> it's lovely. I am planting up uh, with young plants at each cane, uh, except for the ones, uh, these three larger ones that you can see because they really don't need any extras in there. The rest, I'm putting a single uh, single plant in, but I'm seeing more and more uh, that the 
uh, shoots are returning uh, from the roots that are already in there. And on this side, um, we've got coriander and shallots. Uh, there are uh, some cosmos in here. Beetroot. Uh, these are the young leeks waiting to uh, go out into their permanent position. There's some lettuce. There's a red orange, which is a type of um, annual spinach. Um, it's really pretty in salads and in stir fries. I don't like the taste of it very much. I find it was too irony, too strong, um, but I'm quite happy to have it in the garden. And then there's some carrots and spring onions, carrots and spring onions. So I'm using the onions to try and disguise the smell of the carrots. And at the end here, uh, there is a stray uh, chard, which I wasn't expecting to be there. I obviously dropped some seed at some point and that's growing. This area has got some potatoes. Uh, there's a couple of strawberry plants, some cosmos, and I've put uh, four different squashes in here. And in this bed, there's red cabbages and some kohlrabi. And then in a row uh, down this side are some beetroot. We've got birds flying around. Uh, in this bed, I have put in um, Bedfordshire champion onions. And these are ones that I've grown from seed. I've never grown onions from seed before, so I'm really excited to see how those turn out. Uh, there are two uh, runner bean plants in here that have uh, grown back. This will be their fourth year of growing in this bed. Uh, and now I'm looking, I can see there's another one coming up. So we have at least three uh, that are coming up for their fourth year in this bed. And then there's some red perilla. And I can't remember whether that has a cinnamon or an aniseed taste, but it's got one of those. Uh, a few more squash plants uh, and some more cosmos. And in this bed, uh, lots of potatoes. And they've been mulched with grass clippings and uh, duck bedding. And so hopefully, uh, somewhere under there, there are lots of uh, lovely potatoes waiting for us uh, at some point in the future. The bed just here, I haven't done anything with yet. Uh, last year it had the celeriac, root parsley and dill in it. It's still got all of those in it because uh, I'm waiting to collect seeds from those. And there is a video uh, coming up showing you what I'm doing on that. Uh, over here are the strawberries. These are the same strawberries that I have promised uh, to lift every year for the last three years. Um, and this year I am actually going to do that. I've already got uh, the wood to make the raised, the edges of the raised bed that will be going there. Uh, so that will be happening. And for the last two beds, uh, this one has potatoes. That's been mulched with duck bedding and pondweed. And over here, uh, I've got my bed of parsnips. Uh, they didn't do brilliantly, so I've also added in uh, a couple of courgettes, semi-climbing courgettes. So we'll see, hopefully they'll slightly trail. Uh, I might need to put some support in for them, but I'm hoping they'll just scramble over the surface of the bed there. But this is the area of the garden I'm that most excited about showing you. Uh, this is what we call the market garden. Uh, and I'm calling it that because it doesn't have any raised beds in it. So she squidging past a raised bed. Uh, that actually is anchoring uh, the archway into the ground to stop the wind blowing it over. But everything on this side uh, is just straight into the ground. The chickens had uh, free range in this area uh, for two or three years, quite a long period. And we also emptied their bedding uh, into this area. Uh, which they then turned over and over to improve the soil. So it was prepared by chickens. On that side, there's courgettes, uh, zucchinis, and Asturian tree cabbage. So that's a perennial cabbage. It's a short-lived perennial. Uh, but the last one I had went for three, nearly four years before it started going to seed. And then uh, in this bed, uh, which is covered uh, to protect it from cabbage white butterflies and moths, uh, that's got red cabbage, savoy cabbage, and um, fildekraut cabbage in it, which uh, is a pointy cabbage. Uh, and then around the edges, there are still some potatoes and quite a lot of weeds. I might need to go in and do a bit of a chop and drop in there. And on the outsides, um, there's some onions here. And I've left them here because I'm hoping uh, that the smell of the onions would help distract uh, any butterflies that are around. And not only that, but I think the flowers are absolutely beautiful. 
So when these open, uh, these will be a little, little globe of creamy white flowers. And along here, there's a row of uh, chard. That's the five colored chard, uh, bright lights or rainbow chard. Uh, and there's also uh, some uh, French beans, some climbing French beans called Necker Gold. And they're gonna climb up this frame, uh, which I put together from recycled materials earlier in the year. Moving on from that more sturdy bean support, I then put up this uh, slightly haphazard um, <laughs> support. I've done that by hammering um, metal poles, which I got from uh, an old trampoline. I think these were the bits that went around the top um, to put to hang the safety net on. Anyway, I bang those into the ground um, and then put the canes in. And I did that partly because the canes uh, are not terribly tall, uh, but also because I couldn't get the canes into the ground without the canes breaking. Uh, but I could uh, use a lump hammer and push these metal poles into the ground. So uh, up here uh, I have my surplus uh, Greek Gigantes beans. Uh, hopefully that will give us a few more plants. There's not many here. Um, and there's certainly not as many uh, plants as there are strings. And I was thinking I might put some tomatoes or some cucumbers on these extra strings, or possibly, if I can get them to germinate, uh, some different climbing French beans. And along here, uh, we've got onions uh, each side uh, of quite a thick row of carrots here. I don't know what the carrots uh, are doing in terms of size. Fingers crossed that there'll be a nice crop for us. I'm growing these for our uh, veg boxes, which start next week. Uh, so I do actually have carrots, not these ones, um, but when the ones in the polytunnel are used up, I'll then be going on to using uh, these carrots. Uh, and I think also by then that possibly a lot of these onions will have been harvested. Right at the back over here, there's a tripod of sweet peas. And this is a bed of uh, potatoes being grown uh, under grass clippings. So they're just, uh, potatoes were laid onto the ground with grass clippings piled over the top of them. And in readiness uh, for the onions to be harvested, I've already put the next uh, crop in and interplanted at the moment. So there are uh, rows of sweet corn here uh, and also of squashes. So once the onions are out, uh, that will leave plenty of room for the sweet corn to spread out uh, and the squash will grow as ground cover and hopefully uh, this area will get filled up really nicely this year. This is the brassica tunnel uh, that came from gardening naturally. I'm really pleased with it. I'm pleased with how it's going on the inside and in the area in front of the brassica tunnel I've got five courgette zucchini plants and they're doing really well. So this one uh, and this one are called Gold Rush. Uh, this one and this one are Green Bush. And the one over there is Genovese. I'll leave links to information about the plants uh, in the video description. And then this whole area uh, is new for us growing in this year. Uh, last year this had uh, a turkey run or a chicken run uh, coming along there and kind of opening out. Uh, in that direction and in front of that uh, I had a brassica tunnel uh, made from recycled materials. I took all of that down uh, in spring and um, at various different stages have popped this weed suppressing membrane down. My plan at the end of the year is to lift this up, give it a really good mulch, allow that to sit all winter and then it will be a great place for growing in next year. But in the meantime, uh, it has the weed suppressing membrane and uh, I've planted masses of different squash. They are all going to scramble together. Uh, they'll probably cross pollinate and all of those things. That's fine. Uh, at the back there, there are uh, some uh, blue Hubbard squashes and I've got those that so they'll grow up uh, onto this support structure I made using pallets and uh, corkscrew willow and the ones that are here will can go up over this piece of pallet and then everything else can just scramble across the floor. 
and then over this side uh, I have a few more uh, charred here and then a double row of courgettes, zucchini and those are again the Genovese, uh, green bush and gold rush. I'm so excited about developing this new area. I'm so excited about having uh, a squash uh, area. It's not just squash. Uh, I have included uh, some kale has gone in, some cosmos, uh, and I'm going to bring some currant bushes out here as well. So that's a quick look through the raised bed garden and the market garden area. And next time uh, we'll have a look at the food forest behind me because there's a lot of food here that is just coming into season and is very lovely and so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today I hope it's a good one and I also hope you'll join me again next time.